Hi, I'm Keegan. This is a bunch of gamers. We are doing The World Below and going to be trying out this game and giving our thoughts at the very end. I'm going to go and let my players introduce themselves. Hello, everyone. My name is Claire Strickland. I uh, teach interactive narrative at Ye Olde Local University, and I write the Handbook of Heroes webcomic as well as a couple of things for AAW Games. So I am an uber nerd, and I'm pleased as punch to be here. I'll be portraying for you the snake person, Hesis. Hello, my name's Thomas. I'll be playing the Darv, uh, known as Hamden from Mudtown. Hello, I'm George. I am playing it, Pete Peddleton the Third, who is a semi-well-known person within Mudtown community, and. Looking forward to the story Keegan has written. Dagote, my name is James Sombrano, and uh, I'll be playing Maker Koso, who is a Makiro inventor from Fortress. You have all decided to winter, so to speak, during the calm in Telver's Hearth. It was a particularly bad chaos storm this season. <clears throat> and... Now that the storms have passed, explorers have started to move back out amongst the strata to explore and see how the tunnels and the caverns have changed. While getting yourselves prepared, rumors have started pouring in about a new cavern being discovered. It seems that an adventuring company had returned a few bodies lighter than when they left. That they found a strange, shadowy area, a cavern vast with mushroom stalks taller than the chasm, but also something strange in the center. They only were able to whisper before most of them died. You have a bit of opportunity to look around if you so choose before venturing out yourselves and maybe making a name for yourselves. Interesting seems that we have opportunity here. I wonder what other whispers of the place are floating about this settlement. I would like to try and hear any rumors and see if we have any other competition that's heading towards this same site. All right. I would like you to make a manipulation persuasion roll, please. Good thing I'm okay at manipulation. A plus, do uh, do ones uh, cancel successes in this system? No, they don't. All right, that is a basic success. You gain some basic information. It sounds like this group were tied to the moths and they were looking specifically for the color. Some, one claiming that there definitely was the color, but the twitching things beyond and the stone men were true horrors. Though it sounds like other companies might be going, it sounds like they will be going with a larger group, if just to make sure that they can soak up the casualties. Well, companions, we are small, we are limbo, I say we beat them back. Seems as good an opportunity as any. Uh, what do you think, Pete? I think that's a good idea. A smaller group is a much more nimble group. It's unanimous well maker while while they're kind of deciding whether or not to go uh maker Kosa was just like packing bags and sacks and like not even asking questions just like yes like there's there's a, a a physical yes we are going i have some small skill at woodscraft or shroomcraft depending on the local lexicon but how are the lot of you for climbing been doing it since i was a child and i've been doing it since I've been exploring these caverns. It's nice to try and find places to learn more about the history and past. Excellent then. And Keegan, I just want to make sure that I understand that we have all the tools that we need to do climbing but Unk's giant tree trunk. Yeah. I'm going to say yeah. Go for it. That works. Cool. Are we set uh, off then? It sounds like you set off. And so this is an exploratory round. And so what's gonna happen is whoever has the highest, it is gonna be a 
Difficulty two roll. And it is because it's you've been doing some preparation. We'll actually drop that by one. And I will need survival plus stamina from the person who has the highest pool. I, I It'll have be a, a pool six. Of six. Six and six. So I have five survival. Sorry. Yeah, five. But I also have the Theseus Climber, which gives me an auto enhancement or an auto hit if I at least get a one. Okay. Oh, shit. I have that, too. What is it? What is it? So if you get one success, it means you get an additional success automatically. Is, does that accidentally make me the uh, pool of seven? Not it's quite. It's still six. Yeah, it's still it's six still... dice. And you also remove complications. Yeah. All right, so... yeah, that's Can I take cl- it, friends? Yep. So roll six dice. That is nothing at eight or above and one natural one. Oof. All right, so we're going to say you do get there, but because of that, we are going to add the exhausted uh the exhausted uh what am i looking for status effect status effect thank you the exhausted status effect which means that you all have to spend a night sleeping or have to deal with that so when your character is exhausted this means that um Whenever, whatever the cause, your character now suffers a moderate complication on all of your actions until you go to sleep. Failure to buy off this complication results in hallucinating, experiencing short-term memory loss, or being affected by other appropriate status effects. But then apologies, I did not suspect that that tree blocking the entrance would be so difficult to get through. Shall we call it a night? When come when it comes to exploring the caverns, it's always best to go at your strongest. I do think the rest is necessary. And speaking of giant mushroom trees blocking entrances, if this means that we are at risk of being caught up by rival bands, could I try to rig up some sort of trap? Maybe a uh, a mushroom that pretty much you have to climb around is almost ready to fall. Okay. Yeah. We will say that you can do that. We're going to say that that is going to be a intelligence, either survival or larceny, whichever is higher. And it's diff two. Survival. Very well. That is three successes on four dice. Awesome. Now, you could spend a point of uh, this the extra success to add the trick noisy trap which means not only yeah. okay yes we are sleeping and we want that alarm too because if we got to get up and go to make sure that we're there that might be more important than exhausting we gotta beat these suckers whoever they don't don't forget that you have a moderate complication that you also have to buy off oh you do have to buy well moderate complication is two successes which she did not get because okay. i said the difficulty was two yep so that does mean that you have created your trap and you have a kind of a short-term memory thing. You do not remember how you made this trap. You'll have to rediscover how to do it next time. You've kind of zoned in and out. But it's quite simple. It only has to carve in the, uh... When cutting, you simply must... Good night, friend. While Hesus is setting up this trap, Hamden is going to use his nourishing harvest synthesis to see if he can find any nearby edible fungi or or lichen. That way we can conserve our food rations for as long as we can. Perfect. Make that roll. And then what was the roll again? It'd be intelligence survival for foraging. You are on it. Uh, it's two successes, actually. Oh, okay. But you are unable to buy off the complication as you're grabbing these things. You feel something crawling and chittering on your hands as you see this spider in various violet hues crawling on you. You give out a yelp. You slap your hand, flinging edible fungi in all directions, creating a loud clap that just echoes 
through this vast cavern. Hamden, are you okay? I'm... I'm alright. A spider caught me by surprise. As you lift your hand and there's no spider guts, no nothing. I... I think I'm just going to lie down. I thought maybe I could scrounge for some food for everyone, but the, the climb was difficult. You start picking up your last mushrooms and head back and... Okay, well, I guess it's... We need to get some sleep. Yep. As you get some sleep, you're finally able to kind of awaken and appreciate the area around you as it's almost a grotto. There's lichen creating almost like a grassy field with titanic redwood mushroom stalks that rise up hundreds of feet in the air. And the ceiling of this place has flecks of possibly chaos stone hundreds upon hundreds of feet in the air creating the illumination like stars in the tales of old of the world above and in the distance like a cloud sits a building of some kind with a great tower and stronghold that seems to protect and wrap around it in the distance Keegan can I go ahead and make a roll to find out if we know what that towering structure is? Uh, that would be a intelligence esoterica difficulty four. Okay. Nothing's coming to mind. Okay. Suppose those stones in the firmament would be valuable were we to flex them from the sky. Metaphorically speaking, of course. Egan, do you suppose that chaos stones are valuable, or do they lose their luster when they're taken from the stone? They are valuable. They're very val- valuable, and especially for Maker Koso. Yeah. Uh, so Maker Koso, when after everyone had slept, uh, when they when they're rested, um, pretty much has a quick uh, bite of a ration and is already gathering up his supplies to go head out, and that is all he cares about. Like, like it's not that. He doesn't see that there's this structure at a distance or anything, but, like, he's very single-mindedly going out to go, like, at first waking, to go out and collect as much chaos stone as he possibly can. Have we ventured together, my friends? I know that you would climb, and I would help you, but there is more than one objective here. That previous party, they found something in the center. That something in the center is the tower, and that tower may well have defenses. What if we were to climb and come in from the top? Us avoiding its battlements and any defenders. Well, Hesus, the well has provided Chaos Rocks for us, and Chaos Rocks help in a multitude of ways. I am actually with Maker on this. We need to collect a few as supplies to continue. Oh, indeed. I wish this to be a profitable venture as well, but if we're going up to the top of the roof anyway, why not come down after we've gathered our stones upon the tower? So you say Not climb. Not in place of, in addition to. Then let us climb. Excellent. All right. The morning comes, I guess, as best as it is, as you can tell in the world below. So you start moving towards an edge to try and climb. Or are you climbing one of the stocks? Oh, I would certainly prefer one of the stocks. Perhaps the one with a cap that hangs out over that tower. Okay. So... So everyone good with moving towards the tower and then getting closer to the stocks to climb up? Yeah, that works. Yep, I'm all for it. Could I... I have the Havern Detective Thesis. Could I look, take a... As we're approaching the stock to climb up it, could I do a quick look around to see if there's any, like, tracks? Maybe kind of take a guess as to... How many, if anything, or any things may be inside this structure? You can get a tracking roll. That would be cunning survival. All right. You do find several footprints. There are some that might have been from the adventuring company from a few days or weeks ago. But there's others, too. Kind of a shambling, foot-dragging set of footprints. They're all around. Stone men, did they say, with their dying breaths? I recall them mentioning the stone men, yes. And Hamden will point out the 
footprints to everyone else as well as he like scratches his beard in thought and there's like a small cloud of spores that come out of his beard <laughs> my mouth was open for that one shall we make our way up and with any luck over these defenders I say let's go and be careful not to be seen we don't know how many they, they are so keep the uh, keep the stock of one of these redwoods between us and the tower that's a good idea All right. Uh, I will begin to slither all right Climb up, you will be... That'll be a strength athletics roll. It is... You mean a might. Or might, yeah. We all know what it is. We, we what know. game are we playing? How do I look at things? Dirtle perception? Is that a thing? <laughs> all right. I do have a climbing hook in my equipment. Would I be able to help everyone else with their climbing rolls as well? Uh, what it'll be is you'll roll first, and then you could attach a rope, and that'll give them an enhancement. All right. Yeah, I'll I'll go ahead and do that then. Two successes. I'll All go right. ahead and climb using Hamden's rope that they threw down. That's three success. That's three hits with no complications, since I have climber thesis. Perfect. And then I see Maker. You came off mute. Yeah, I wanted to ask uh, something clarifying. Can you combine the different enhancements people are are, are doing? Because Koso ha- has their, his own, but uh, I like to still use the help that's being provided too. You could use the help as a narrative thing, but uh, it's that you just use the best enhancement. Oh, okay. All right. Well, in that case, make make your Koso kind of like sets down his packs for a moment and and rolls up his sleeves and uh, under underneath them like where where the fur covers his arms he kind of like grips at his arms and like coaxes out these thick looking like bony or maybe stony like hooks a- until they're covering his arms and then like hoists his packs back on and starts to like climb up on his own i have natural tools that gives me scene long tools um for a plus two. Oh shit awesome all right make your roll all right, that's three, so you get it. And Joey, what is your character name? I'll s- slice this out. A question. Uh, should I, like, should my character, like, randomly, well, not randomly, join the party wherever they are now? Uh, we're just going to have it that you were always here, and we will fix it in post where you'll do your character in- introduction, and I'll splice it back at the front. From the editing box... Uh, I totally forgot to ask her to do her introduction and splice it in at the front. So, surprise, motherfuckers. Um, let's go with Zetru. And then, uh, same to you, it'll be a might, might athletics roll to climb the redwood mushroom. Okay, so I've got one eight and a nine, and that's it. And and nine, and then the rest of them. So you got three, so we're going to bank another uh, chunk of momentum. So that means that the group has 11 momentum. What do you mean three? I, it was just eight and nine. That's two, is it? Uh, so uh, how it is is that one of the characters, they went up with a hook and they have a rope attached to them to help other people climb, which gave them a plus one enhancement. So if you roll a single success, you get one additional success to your roll. And that's what enhancements are. Yeah. And momentum so you- we declare before we roll and then we get an extra die? No, so momentum is you can spend after, and that gives you an enhancement up to three. So, Six. yes. Or you can use it to change the scene slightly. All right, as you're climbing up, Koso, you notice that as you're climbing and you're catching up with everyone, just bear crawling up this tree shroom like a champ, you see what appears to be like a torso hanging out of it. Uh, with a skull and a fungal-like body covering the bones as it starts to twitch as it senses the weight of you all on it. It twitches, and you see mushroom stalks open from the skull hole, and then they ignite like eyes and look around as the thing looks down and starts to scream and reach out towards you. So this is the... Throughout this whole trip, Koso has been very... Like, hasn't been speaking to anyone. It's just doing what needs to be done. And so this is the first time that he speaks out loud since they've left. And he just says, oh, good. 
something to fight. And I'm gonna let him, honestly, I'm gonna let him grab me. Okay, cool. Your defense is one, unless you want to spend, uh, you want to just roll your stamina to increase your defense, Koso. How does that work exactly? So if you want to fight defensively, you roll twice your stamina, and every success you roll is your defense, or for the rest of the round, or you fight normally and you roll stamina, and that every success at difficulty zero adds to your defense. What I want to do, maybe maybe you can, maybe I'll just say what I want to do. You can help me figure out the sure. right way to do this. Uh, I want to allow this thing to grab me because my hope is to grab back. Okay. Koso's armor is both adhesive and spiked. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. I am down for this. What I will need then is for you. Uh, so you're, you'll do your defense just so that they don't get, they don't grab you in an un- inconvenient way. So you can't grapple back. Okay. Okay. And so uh, roll your, I would roll your stamina. Just at flat stamina. This flat stamina. You can use momentum to add enhancements to this after you roll, though. All That's right. That's two, right? Yeah. That's two. So your defense is two. Uh, you do want to spend one enhancement to make it three so that you break their their def- their attack on you. Yeah. Yeah, if that's okay. what I need, then yes. Okay, then you've done that. The group momentum is now 10. And what happened is, is it goes in, you get just enough off, and now you may do your own might close combat to grapple. With your adhesiveness, I will give you a... It'll, uh, I'll give you a two enhancement. Okay, and then also it, the, it says that it takes one less hit to establish grapple. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, never mind them then. Yeah, that's great. You're, that just means your difficulty... If that's how it works, then uh, your difficulty... Oh, that seems like a few. That's, what, two, four, no, five. 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 Do you want to add any tricks to this? Uh, how does... <laughs> tell me how that works. All right, uh, so I have created the combat tricks document on our Google Drive, and so that should help. So we have things like critical, oh, yeah. which means that, so you could spend three of your hits to do an additional point of damage to your target, so you could do damage on top of just grappling. You could faint. Uh, you generate uh, enhancements for everyone else attacking this thing between one to three. You could... Uh, you could seize and try and take something off the body. You could try and throw them off the tree. That seems pretty good. That they're a part of? I mean, I would increase the, the number of tricks yeah. needed, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I think I think I'll do that. But 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 like both of us. Okay. So I wanna stay holding on to them, but I, I do want to like pull them off the tree. Okay. Cool. I will say that, that costs uh, two additional successes. So you've got three successes left. Do you want to burn one on damage on the thing? Sure, why not? Okay, so you do one damage. The thing screams out as you pull fibers on the body, start ripping as the skeletal remains kind of hang off and the thing starts howling, howling and howling. And now for everyone else, now that we've hit official initiative, what is going to happen is is you're going to roll either athletics cunning or empathy dexterity, whichever is higher, and that will determine the initiative order. You said athletics cunning or dexterity empathy, whichever is higher. That's one for me, Haas. All right. And uh, I do have a reflexive leadership role to make. Okay. It is battlefield economy. Ooh. Okay. You quickly form a battle plan to deploy your party according to the strengths on successful leadership. Grant your party a cost reduction of one to purchase combat tricks. That two tens? I can't tell. That'd be three successes. Fantastic. So you have succeeded. All right. So all at the same time, Hamden, the fungal creature in Koso's arms, and Zetru get to act. You got this game uses combat. This game uses combat bands. Obviously, Koso is engaged. I'm going to say that the rest of you are short. You can move one range band closer reflexively, or you can spend your whole action to move two range bands. 
the creature is going to attempt to break its grapple. Or actually, it's going to. This is probably more in line since it's barely got any health left. Yeah. Okay. It's going to explode. Good. <laughs> Which burns its last health. <laughs> burns its last health. Um, as for clarity, um, I'm sorry. As for the creature kind of starts to shake. Uh, what? What is? Uh, yeah. So you guys get to act at the same time, Hamden. So what are you going to do? Okay. Hamden is going to. I'm going to use my entire action to kind of distance myself, and uh, Hamden will kind of wrap. The, his rope around his waist as he starts to ready his bow uh, at a long range. Okay. You know it'll be dead next round, right? On your initiative, since Zetru is on the same initiative, Zetru, what are you doing this round? Is it already dead, or is it like one hit it's, point or whatever way? It's, it's going to explode this exact same round that you're acting. Got it. Then um. I am going to like I wasn't very close at already, so I'm no. going to just like curl up to make sure that it, my like my none of my face or whatever is uh, visible or vulnerable or out in the open. Perfect. Awesome. All right. With that, it does explode. It does one point of damage to Koso, and Koso, if I could get a a stamina check, diff one. Sure. All right, so you succeed as you're able to just cover your mouth just in time as spores go everywhere. And in the distance, you hear, like, screaming throughout the grotto, similar to the the scream of the creature that just blew up. Get ready for more of these. Can we climb faster, please? As you start... I sign up for mushrooms, mere chaos... Stones. Climbing up, up, up. As you see them starting to swarm, there are, you see about three or four starting to arrive as they touch the stock and you see them like retreat back in pain as you see mycelia actually connecting them before they start climbing again. And you see them starting to slowly fuse with the mushroom stock as they try and climb after you before getting stuck partway up as there's now a ring of snapping fungal people reaching but unable to climb up after you. It's a good thing that we plan to get dropped down onto the tower, isn't it? As you start to get to the top, there's about a six-foot gap between you and three chaos stones. Well, without, with no concern about fungal zombies, Koso's going straight for those stones. Perfect. Okay. How is Koso going to do it? Give me a description and I'll give you... Uh, and then you can suggest what skills you want to do use for it. Well, again, uh, so so two things. Uh, I don't know if this applies or not because I don't understand all the rules language for the game just yet. Sure, sure. But I have a thesis called One Man's Trash that gives me plus two to finding useful items. And it says when I delve into a cave. I don't okay. know if this qualifies as that or not. I would say, but but in general, like my, my natural tools, basically Koso is going to like sh- th- those like stone looking uh, hook appendages that that he coaxed out of his arm. He's gonna change them into being like more like mining tools to try and pull the stones from the wall. Perfect. All right, you are able to do that as you're gonna start digging. I am going to say that it is a difficulty one with a two complication that you need to buy off, or they will fall, or to catch them, I should say. What what would be a appropriate skill for mining? Would technology work? I think tech, yeah, we'll go with technology, sure. And we have momentum you can also use. Okay, so yeah, you bought, but not enough for the complication unless you want to spend one of your momentums. Sure, it's just one, right? It's just one, yeah, because yeah. that would get you up to three. As you catch, you, you just, there is no other word for it but gremlining these three stones with your mining hands as you collect and you're standing on the top of this massive mushroom whose cap is a brilliant mix of rusted reds and greens, as if it was crafted of iron and copper and left out in the elements for far too long. 
What kind of role to determine the properties of such an impressive specimen? That would be science. Um, I would also science. like to use my... Um, this is either a synthesis or a... Ca- I think this is a sorcery, which is reveal base chaos. Would that help me understand th- what the effect, the properties, as we said, are of this uh-huh. thing? With this sorcery, the caster can recognize and identify the effects of active chaos powers out to medium range. And there's additional tricks as well if you want me to read those. Oh, okay. So yes, you can use that. Additional heads can be spent to gain evidence about the sorcery's intended use, the mindset of the caster at the time the sorcery was manifested, how long the sorcery has been persisting, and how long the sorcery has remaining on its duration. Each piece of evidence gains costs one hit, whatever. It is four successes okay. on intellect technology. Uh, science, you mean? Yes, I did mean that. Okay. So, anyway, cool. And so, yes, you can do that. That's not a single success. There's nothing uh, over eight here. Everything under eight. Then, um, is there any mechanic here that can help me? Some, like, maybe roll again or. There is middle? something for momentum again. And this is uh, if everyone's cool with you spending a momentum like this, and I'll find the momentum rules, is. On top of that, you can spend two momentum to change a failure to a success, but you will get zero. uh, You cannot spend momentum to add enhancements after. Okay. Well, what do you guys say? Can I can I take the momentum or not? I don't mind either way. I don't mind. Yeah. But if you if you fail it, we also gain one momentum. Okay. So I roll again, or just I get one. You just uh, succeed. You just succeed. Cool. Okay. For two or for three successes, Hesis, you discover that these mushrooms have a kind of antithetical property to the dark and the abyss. It seems that this is a kind of thing that could be used to help cure infection of the fungus that creates the fungal zombies that are ringing around the the stock below. Thus, after a couple hours of work, you could synthesize a potion that would allow the removal of fungal infection from your fellows. You watch as Hesus begins to coil around like an Ouroboros, digging in with the saw blades until a small slice off the top of the mushroom peels free. He will then wrap that up like a tarpaulin and store it in his side bags. And is that true? You discover that there... As far as medium range, and that includes the other stocks around you, chaos emanates from all of these. These were clearly created by chaos and formed through very powerful chaos sorceries, though how long ago is a mystery. And what does that mean exactly? Like, is that, what does that tell me? Like, how common are... A chaos, chaos source magic around us in this world. So there's lots of magic, but chaos sorcery to create a whole new species is incredibly impressive. Mm. And for because this this is think of this as a huge cavern. This is a cavern as far as the eye can see in almost every direction, and it is filled with these massive redwood-sized mushrooms. Each one apparently having been crafted of chaos. Yeah, I'm just gonna, like, squint, and, like, as if, like, suddenly, like, you just squish, like, lemon in my face, and I just go, like, God! Chaos power everywhere. This is impossible. How is one supposed to get anything done here? It seems most profitable to me. So, um, while they're examining the stones and the mushroom um hamden is keeping a lookout of not just keeping an eye on the fungal zombies but also keeping an eye out for anything else that might be coming towards them and um i do have the tracker thesis to give me an enhancement to track or detect monsters you are detecting all the monsters down there there's none up here though Okay. It's pretty pretty wide and open. To clarify, up here on to- atop this cap, what we've managed to get, we're near the ceiling. There were only three chaos stones and all the So long it's you're stretch. at the you're closer to the edge and they actually start to slope up. I see. 
And so it's... Well, let us see if we can get to the top and maybe walk about, find more stones, or find a good vantage to drop onto this tower and visit whoever may live there. So, you're on this large mushroom. You're looking over. There's others that are close, but they will require jumps to get there, though ropes might be able to help others swing across, so to speak. You could try climbing on the I, ceiling. Can I form an Anticia bridge? You could. Can I, like, can I, like, bite? Can I, like, bite the far end of the next mushroom and have people walk over me? That would be a might check, but yes. Cool. Let's see if we can't get some more Chaos Rocks. All right. Might plus what? Might pl- plus athletics to keep yourself strong and rigid. You're basically doing an extreme plank while everyone walks along your back. That is a success. A single? How many successes? Just one? Okay. You'll need three successes. I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and spin from the pool. Okay. There we go. So you're holding. Is everyone gonna walk across? Essus? Yeah, H- Hamden is going to walk across, but he's gonna do this at a sort of like one at a time sort of pace. I I appreciate the not hand. Is that true? There's another two chaos rocks for Koso. If they wish I'll to start ahead. digging. Oh, Absolutely. I, say, I could start working on it too. Okay, if you're both doing it, then there will be no risk of falling. And we're going to just say that you get them this time. One for each, right, Koso? One for each. If you can make use of them. I can always make use of them. The well provides. So for my aspirations, that's a short term. What yeah. does that provide? That's how you get experience. Okay. Oh. It's also I so. Forgot about those. So when you so this is also how this game is kind of OSR in that OSR games it tries to build in a default mode of play, and in this it's usually expo- exploration. Like if you're playing OSE and you don't know what to do, there's always the default pick a direction and just walk that way until something interesting shows up. In this game. Because you've set your aspirations, your default mode of play is finding which aspiration to go after that session. So, are there any more rocks that I can take for myself? I don't like Koso's the one taking all the rocks, because my character's just as rock-obsessed. Um, so, is there any more rocks, shiny shinies, I can uh, take for myself? Or try to? If you jump to the next mushroom, there are. I will! It is something that scares me, but I had I do have a short term aspiration of accomplish a feat that scares me. <laughs> wow, isn't that convenient? Oh my god. Um Clever. Uh thank God you got over your heights after this aspiration and <laughs> uh, <laughs> Might athletics to make the jump. It's diff two. Oh no. <laughs> That's one eight. Okay, you can spend a point of momentum, or you can fail and we- Fall down uh, to my death? You won't fall down to your death. What it'll be is your character will jump, slip up, but they won't take damage in this case. Or they'll get an extra roll to try. They'll take some damage and possibly, you know, have something different happen. Uh, Will I get to the other side of the mushroom? You will have the opportunity to get to the other side of the mushroom. <laughs> Fuck yeah, let's do it. All right. You know what? Momentum- I'm still, I still have to do something that scares me. I can't. Okay. Uh, can I Momentum count? has been added to the pool as you jump. You get close. Your hand catches the rim, and it's just a little squelchy as your hand slips through with a burst of kind of like mushroom goo through your hand as you fall. And now I need you to make a close combat roll, dexterity close combat, to stab your weapon into the, or might, might or dexterity close combat, to stab your weapon in and stop yourself. Oh, let's go. This is fine. That's seven. Diff two with one complication. The complication being that your weapon will be dulled and you'll have to spend time to repair it. Oh, so man. if you get three successes, well, you're good. Okay, that's a nine. So that's one, two, three. Three. Three successes, so you get it. So you get the gloves in, you start sliding down, you catch yourself, and you're like, 
Woo! Yeah, then you look down. The oh, whole boy. world starts I mean, to shake oh, and you scramble boy. to the top. Heights are not a place for intestines. Oh, and I'm on the other I've side. I've had trouble with that particular phobia. There oh, are speak for yourself! Not everyone is as courageous as you! I thought I There's just a... did. But however will you come back? We'll figure it out. We'll cross that snake bridge when we get there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There are two stones that are available. Yeah. As you're able to collect one, the other one is just out of reach. You need a boost. Ah, darn it! I wave with my tail. <laughs> distance. Fine. Will you help me? Sorry, it's very echoey in here. What was that? Help me! Oh, of course. Happy to lend a hand. Metaphorically speaking, of course. <laughs> Can I bite yonder mushroom and make my way across? Might, <laughs> might athletics. Diff two. Hessus bites and climbs over. As you get over, you give a boost and you're able to collect. Have we done quite enough mining for this quick rapid fire expeditionary thing? Or do you wish to pluck every star from the sky? I will take as many rocks as I want. Indeed. But if there are yet greater treasures to be found in yonder tower, mayhaps we should head that way first. If we, if the rest of the group heads back, I will follow. If everybody else is still collecting rocks, I will also collect my rocks. Friends, are you also collecting rocks? I, I think we're done at large. We can... Or I, I believe we should move on. Okay. Do I need another... Do we need more rolls to get back? There would be rolls to go down. Specifically, you do climbs and buy-off complications to avoid the notice of the fungal zombies that have now dispersed since they formed a living ring around one of the stalks that you climbed up. I have a question. Do I need to... Do, we need, do the two of us need to roll to come back to the mushroom? One of you can do it and then be a bridge for the other. Oh, God. I thought the the plan was to walk across the mushroom tops to the tower and then drop down onto the tower, not walk down, climb down the mushroom and then walk to the tower. Got it. You can do that or as close to that as you can. So we'll do an we'll do a group roll to speed this up. Uh, whoever has the highest might athletics can do it for the group. I was just saying, if I could count my tools, uh, it's seven. I don't know if you, I can count my tools, though. Uh, what would your tools be? If, if you're going to describe your tools, I... My, my, my body ones that I can modify. <laughs> my body is my I, tool. Oh, it is. actually, that could work because... That could work simply because... Hamden has a rope, so if they tied the rope to you and you used your body to basically be a living grappling hook for the group. Yeah, yeah. Then we're going to say that your seven does apply to this. So make that roll. All right, that is enough. So leapfrogging, grabbing on, everyone swings down, climbs up, leapfrogs, and there is a breach in the forest to where there is no way you could jump to the next set Below there is a river that flows through this area with a couple bridges and what appear to be several statues all along the river's edge. What are the odds that those statues are not statues? Hundred <laughs> percent. I was just thinking the same thing. Those could be the stone men. Same here. Does anyone have a, a way to breach such a gap as this? Could I cast the, um, shoot, what's it called? Uh, reveal base chaos again to see if these are magical statues, aka okay, not statues at all, that are going to come alive and attack us. Because it's medium range, I'll have to crawl down the stock a little bit. Well, before that... Or be lowered with the rope. What were you saying? I was asking if there was a way to span the gap somehow. I mean, how far are we really talking about, Keegan? Can we possibly throw a grappling hook and all go hand over hand? I'm going to say it's about 200 feet. 
That would be ah. a big no, Haas. Can we walk on you again? Are you 200 feet tall? Not quite. No, oh, I am trying. I eat a good breakfast every morning. It's what growing in Tissia need. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, you said the climbing thing, the rope. So we, I guess we could climb down, walk on the ground, and then climb back up. Is that an option? Or is, it, is, there, is there a chasm underneath those? No, there's a the river, and there are bridges over the river in several places. Ah. What if this? What if we make our way down into the river and use that as cover to swim across, thus avoiding these creatures entirely, for surely they are creatures, the stone men of Luma. Well, I am no stranger to avoiding detection, so I could lead the way to help us stay hidden. How long does Envenom take? Again? Uh-huh. Is it just, like, immediate? Yeah, it's per scene, so... Okay. Uh, well, first, I don't know if we're going to have to interact with these definitely not statues, but hold out your weapons. And I said, like, loudly and with command, so you gotta do it. I coil nearby and present my saw blades. Okay, well... Sure, I'll just assume that everybody does it. I just go like like a big like <sighs> like getting like really gross like spit and then just <sighs> like I spit some nice poison on your weapons just all around. Oh, it's warm. Oh, don't be disgusting. You're the one who just spit on me, my dear. <laughs> Petals and pots and such. Tune into the pages only fans for the rest of that story. <laughs> um, spread it around if you want the full effect, and don't be gross. Stop it, Keegan! <laughs> Roll around in my spit, but you know, not in a gross way. No, not at all. <laughs> you were the gross one. Yeah, you just hocked a loogie on everybody's shit, but no, no, me, I'm gross. All right, I see how it is. Yes! <laughs> all right, all right, somebody tie off a grappling hook so it can shimmy into the river. Let's go drown. <laughs> oh. You slither down the grappling hook and start moving. As you see the stone men, you see them all, several in the river, posed in various forms of shock and pain, as well as several insects that have touched the edge of the pool and are stone as well. All of them have the one thing in common. They are touching the water. Oh, fuck. I slither in reverse. (laughs) We have a problem with this plan. Shit. Uh, can 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 I use my snaky head to swing out over the land? To try and get the, uh, to try and get the, uh, the, the bottom of the rope uh, away from the water now. Okay. Yes, <laughs> I, I do that then. All right. So you swing, you get the rope away from the edge. The little fringe touches it, and you do see that it like gets this mineral deposit on it that makes the edge look like it's made of stone. Yes. Nice. Come back. I have an idea. Ah, oh, but this is fun. We. You will. D- you will have fun when you die. I'll come back. I slither back up. I'll okay. have fun. When uh, you I would die. like to slither back down just enough for a safe distance and okay. cast reveal base chaos. Okay. Oh, no, you've got to be kidding me again! Not a single success. What is happening? Ah. Uh. Never mind, because um, I was in, I was, I mean, I was relying on additional tricks to figure out how to fix this, but I don't need to know what the magic is. I already can see that it's magic. <laughs> I blame I, Esoterica. This game is dumb, and it's poorly balanced, and it's stupid, <laughs> except when I roll good, then it's awesome. <laughs> so you yeah. climb up, like I said, there are places with bridges across the river. Okay. Can we just, like, take the uh, the rope down from the cap back onto the land? Yes, you can. You go down. Whoever has whoever's a good... Uh, whoever wants to do it. Cunning survival. That's a seven for me, guys. A what? Oh, Cunning survival. Ahead. Just uh, 
Cunning survival. It's seven. Whoever wants to do it, just roll it. I got seven as well, but you go ahead. It's fine. I see at least one success. I got... Damn it. Have one success. <laughs> it, it, it is at least one success. Oh, so you're able to buy off the complications as well as your hand launches forward and catches Hesius as you both see it, but Hesius missed some of the others along the sides of the bridge and in a couple spots walking, there is this mycelic tangles that almost look like they form skeletal hands that reach, reach out. Like in the water? On the bridge. Yikes. When when uh, Koso grabs Hesus, he says, "You can only die once in this in this existence." <laughs> ah, but it is just this existence. The well brings life, and surely I'll return for something. When Hesus says better. that, uh, Koso just drops him. <laughs> As you just avoid the tendrils, they are easily avoidable. Now seen, what you had to you missed was on the bridge planks. It is clearly grown under, and there's just these. T- Tiny little tips of the fingers hanging out between some of the boards, as if like small hands reaching up to clasp those uncautious enough. Well, how are these uh, statues looking now that we're at close range? Unmoving, pained in all their expressions. Because if there's a, they would be, they can be cured. Possible, but it's unknown how long they've been here too. Could I cast Reveal Base Chaos again, but this time on the statues and not the river? Sure. Mm-hmm. Is it possible for me to use my sorcery elemental switch so that on is... one of the statues that can, since we're going based on that it's a petrification, uh-huh. I can change that into a different tag and it lasts possibly one turn per hit if I so choose to, to spend it on that? Uh, sure. You, it would be per per person, yes. Well, I'm only doing it on yeah. It's it. I each hit I can use on different people or different it. targets. Yeah, I I can just do the closest one. Okay. So that's three successes. I'm going to change the petrification to. Uh, the only thing that I can think of is burning. Oh. Ed- <laughs> Yeah, I know it doesn't be, make it any be, better. Be free, friend! Ah! That Fantastic Four <laughs> bad version. I can't, I can set myself on fire, but only once. So I'm going to do that for... Th- Was there any sort of complications that I needed to overcome, or is it just... Then for three, three turns, whatever you decide is how long a turn is, uh, they are, instead of petrified, they are burning. As you see the petrification leave, and you see the person in the water constantly, like their body shifting to rock and then immediately catching fire again while they're touching it, as they look withered and old. As you see the rush of age starting to strike them as their face starts to quickly, their face starts to quickly age as they climb out and they go, as they speak almost an archaic tongue, it's probably closer to what would be considered Middle English if you considered the evolution of languages. As they're asking who you are, what has happened to the grotto, where is my lord? And they're just kind of cool with being on fire. Well, they're they're rapidly aging. They, there's a there's degrees. To, you know. <laughs> who is your lord? Lord of the Keep, the Lord of Ruin, since the rise of the dark, as they turn to dust, and the dust piles on fire. Ooh, that's a full-on fire and ice shit. Let's go. I'm impressed with the way you tortured that thing. Torture was not the end game; it was answers, and I apologize for the pain that I caused. I might have gone with slowed, or senses occluded, or mild gastrointestinal distress. Why did you set him on fire? I can only shift elements. I can't just willy-nilly do anything. Well, they were dying in place, so what matters? What matter why if they burned? Tell me, my friends of the arcane persuasion, what exactly is this lord of ruin? Is there art in tomes and texts that speak of such an entity? 
I do believe what they're talking about is the Lord and Ladies of Rot. Is it? Can we make some sort of check? I guess it would be a culture check? Or what? For coming up with culture stuff or more information on the Lords of Rot, that is culture, and that would be cunning culture. Four successes. Hessus, you know that the Lords and Ladies of Rot are mythical beings. Very few, if any, have seen them who are not part of the dogma of Rot. Though this doesn't quite fit that either. The Lords of Rot, you, as far as you know culturally, don't really tie to the fungal realm. In this grotto, it's... We call it the grotto. I, surely that's an esoteric name of a lost civilization. Curiouser and curiouser. Shall we knock at the front door? Tell them that we've come calling. I'm not sure. I, I have a, a bad feeling. Call it a hunch. Yeah, I, I think that what we need to do is just let this grotto go and let it move about its way, and we just harvest what we can from this place. Who's afraid of an old ruin? It is no. not. Maker Koso goes to walk towards the doors. Okay. That they're after Koso. For if there is a lord here, I would make his acquaintance and perhaps become his friend. All right. As you get to the doors, Koso, as you move down through the, what appears like an empty moat, as the drawbridge has long been rotted away, <clears throat> you get to the doors. Are you going to push them open? I think uh, the with the way Koso operates is that he would first, like, kind of look over how they're constructed. Like, I, I don't want to, like, d and this, but he's definitely, like, looking for any kind of, like, you know, booby trap or anything that, that might cause harm to them. Okay. As you're looking around, the doors are intricately carved. The mushroom forest looks, quite frankly, bizarre upon the carvings of this door as they rise up and their fringe is further down the tree and there are multiple stalks coming off with various other frills coming off of it. You see odd animals that you can't understand, a long-faced creature with many pointed horns on all fours, and a lord holding a horn and blowing upon it and chasing after them with dogs that seem a lot larger than the dogs found in your communities. And more importantly, the esoteric symbol of the sun, the lost power found in the world above before the cataclysm and the the great exodus into the world below. There are threads of fungus on the edges that you see that could be triggered if you open the doors all the way. But if you crack them and crawl and kind of shift your body to the side, then you would likely not open them enough to touch the fungal strands. Well spotted, Kosa. Kosa's pretty small, um, being a Makiru, so I think that would be a pretty easy thing to do. And and a- as he cracks it, he does kind of like look back to everyone else and is like, don't push them open too much, or your second death will come swiftly. As you all slide in, and you're in a fairly large room, the ceiling is missing in this room as you see the starry like skies of the chaos rocks above and there are several odd well they look similar to the roots found at the highest strata but flat boarded together crafted things with fungal strands all around and growing and feasting upon you're not sure what, with the skeletons of long dead beasts with long faces and single single toes resting throughout this place with strands that had fed upon them. This place appears to be bereft of the living. What I wonder has happened here. And these mutants, I wonder what they might have looked like with the flesh on. Greetings to the Lord of Rot, who may live within this tower. We've come to call. And to make friends. Is there anybody home? Your voice echoes out and slowly dissipates. So there's obviously like more of the chaos rocks in the ceiling that you mentioned. But uh, is there like a, 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 a 
a role or an ability I, I can use to start to go through and, and see if there's anything that's like useful and harvestable. Like, are these bones useful to something we might want to collect and, and take back to our community? Like, what, what, what here is of value? So the bones are definitely of value because they are bones of things that you do not recognize, which means that you may have discovered a new creature in the world below, or you have found creatures that are long since extinct from the world above that could be used by several guilds. So Koso would very quickly get to work uh, uh, trying to pull those these things apart, but also be very mindful of any mycelium, because they've been dealing with a lot of issues with this, uh, that might be attached to them that, that could potentially harm them, but is going to start trying to disassemble skeletons to take back to their community. Perfect. Could I get a dexterity survival on this one? Uh, it'll be difficulty one with a two complication. I modify my tools again to be useful for this particular survival role. They were already survival, but like climbing, so... Uh-huh. Yeah, so yeah, you can do that. How would you how would you change them to make them useful for this particular um, task? Basically just like extra grasping pieces that make it easier to like pull these things apart um, without damaging them and also to like put them in the many like different sacks and, and, and packs that Koso's carrying with him. Okay. Yeah, I'll say that you've basically Swiss Army knifed like one of your hands. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's get that roll. And then well, that roll's happening. Say Swiss Army man. <laughs> like the movie. Hey, I'm young enough to understand that reference. Uh it's a great movie. Uh George, what wood did you have? Hesus. This is not something you need to call out for. We are already here to learn about this grotto. It's the lords of the lords and ladies of Rotter, not people you want to mess with. We are already here. We're messing. If there's if there's someone here, then surely we'd be wiser to make ourselves known. Or perhaps I'm wrong. Or perhaps touching the bones was ill considered. I point with my tail towards the uh, the skeleton. Koso, you get the thing around, you get that, but you do snap a couple of the mycelia by mistake. And a, oh. a momentum? Because I only needed one more success, right? Sure, because uh, your your tools gave you an enhancement of one, yes? I, I okay. added them to the roll. Oh, got it. I see. Then, yeah, you'd need uh, two momentum for this to buy off the complication. All right, so you got seven momentum left. As you pull it, you leave. It's actually quite impressive. You're actually, it actually stays draped as if the skeleton was still there. As you move little pieces of wood and things like that to create almost the exact curve of the skeleton of the strange creatures that you start packing away. Moving away, now that you, now that you have a better firm grasp of the area too, you notice that there is a door on the southwestern Wall leading west, and another door on the southeastern wall heading east. Are there any disturbances on the floor that might give way to anything that's been moving around in here? Not really. This place seems long abandoned to the point where, and with with all the fungus and lichen growing, it's difficult to gather footsteps. It seems like the fungus has been growing rapidly. This is an excellent sign. It means that the other party, you know, the dead ones, they've not yet raided and pillaged this place. We're the first. Um, I would like to do another thingy ability, um, which is um, Living Shadow. Um, there's one per session. I basically send my shadow off on its own to uh, stake out and like figure out what's going on in a thing. It can't oh. hear or see or whatever, but it can see whatever it is shadowing. It is currently inside its... Yeah. I'll, I can actually just read out the description, which would probably Please. be more helpful. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, once per session, your shadow and the corporeal substance of your body can detach. Your shadow can then move up to long range from your body to provide you with valuable information about other areas. Your shadow has no thickness or mass and is unable to impact its surroundings, and it can be sent, it can be sent into areas with shadows and darkness to learn the location of items and people. It can't hear or touch, but it can observe whatever it touches. Your physical body will not cast a shadow and inflicts oh and inflicts a minor complication 
to positive interactions, which I don't really have, or a plus one enhancement to intimidate with those who witness this apparition. And if you file to fail to buy a Florida, uh, blah, 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 stuff. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. So yeah, I want to try to uh, send my shadow off on its own to pick the direction. Let's say the to the right. And the shadow right. will go off on its own. Does that count? It's long range. Is that enough? Yeah, you, that is enough as it shoots down okay. and starts to move through. There's a hallway here, and it's perfect for the shadow because there is no light. And the shadow is able to move perfectly. As you notice that the hallway bifurcates, one heading north and one continuing to the west. Or did you send it? To, or, sorry, one is continuing right and one continues starts heading north. Do you want your shadow to go north or continue going straight? Whatever the rightmost path is. All right, goes east and it goes into a room under the doorway, crawling in sure. just a little bit. As you see that it's, this place is filled with several chests, fungal strands everywhere, and Jesus. old rotted beds and what appear to be skeletons with mushrooms growing upon their corpses. Mm-hmm. Can I peek real quick what the west did as well and then come back, have it come back? That's the west one, so the north one is the one you'd want to go up next. Yes, then that. So you go up to the north one, and that one also bifurcates. Uh, there is a way that heads to the west and one that heads to the east and one that heads to the north. <laughs> okay, then I'll come back. <laughs> okay. I'll have it come back. Ah, there is loot waiting for us, and many, many paths diverging, at least on the right. Should I just, uh, I mean, how, wait, how long does this last? How long can I have my shadow fucking around for? Um, it doesn't really say. I guess it's up until I have it come back. Okay. Um, I could have it, if you guys, I could have it peek at what the left path as well does, if we are so... Cowardly, but at least we know what the right lies for us. A friend of mine once told me that we only get one life. Why not use it wisely? Scout for as much as you can, I say. Okay, then I will do that, Keegan. Just we're gonna sit here for ten minutes as my shadow goes around and fucks, <laughs> fucks about and tells us what there is. So going down the other path. And the left path, yes. Yep. For now. The left path goes, there is a north one path and another left path that continues. The north path leads left directly left. into a room. Okay. So you're going down the left path that goes north or it sharply turns north. Then there is another left path and a continuation of the northern path. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you this. Anything especially to our attention that the shadow will eventually come across, that's not loot, uh, which will, you will tell us about, of course, but like, is there any living or ish or undead, maybe, things that the shadow comes across? The shadow continues on. It does find more skeleton things with mushrooms growing on them. Given what happened on the stock, those mushrooms might rapidly grow and create more fungal zombies. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, that's all I find? Loot and skeletons? Yes. So right had the loot, left had more... Or both sides had skeletons, and right had both. Okay. And uh, did my shadow go into the those three fork, whatever paths that eventually appeared as well? Uh, we can say that On the right that side. it did. So I did. I say it did. All right. So it goes down. It gets too far down the furthest left one. It starts to fade out, and so returns. The mm-hmm. other one is it pops in and there's a what a room filled thick with fungus and lichen it's has warped and corrupt portraits of for, what appear to be forgotten nobility humans hobgobs or humans uh d- darv elv all the like warped the paintings partially decayed with the fungal growths upon it you notice that there are little flecks of gold and some very fine clothing that has not been worn away 
by the ages, which is interesting. Mm. And then the other room that it is able to get into, it's small. It has several glasses and old bottles that are now empty. There are casks that have fungal growths on them, as well as what appears to be almost like a rat, but crafted of mushrooms as its little mycelia tentacles move like spider legs and it shifts and opens as polyps and acid sputters out as it looks around for food. <clears throat> and as the shadow comes back to me, I just like, <sighs> what is it like? Is it like if I'm like, my eyes go white and as I'm following the shadow's presence, like I'm watching through its whatever's, is that what it's like? Or do, does it just, I can just do whatever I want and it reports back to me psychically. It just reports back to you psychically. Like you get the images in your cool. head. Okay. After a while, I'll just say, okay, to the right. If during all this, I could have rendered that mycelia sheet that I cut from the top of the mushroom into an antifungal uh, potion. Oh, interesting. Do we have enough time while the scouting was scouting? Yeah. That would be cunning science. Cunning and science. Not medicine. Just checking. Or you can do medicine. We can say medicine. Eight. Since it is medical. Right. A pool of eight. Not even God himself could keep me from succeeding on this roll. Fool. <laughs> <laughs> Three successes. You are able to craft a potion that will remove the infected condition on three people who drink it. They just take a sip. To the right. I think I will lead us to the loot room first. Okay. Um, just to check out what's up in the chests uh, in case we find some cool stuff. Also, actually, now that I say that, we might have to fight the skeletons. But I'm not going to tell people that because communication is not something Intizens do very much, I'm going to say. So, uh, yeah, let's go to the loot room. As you open the door and you see one of the beds spring up as the skeleton looks up as the mycelia grows along it and creates a fleshy body before like mushrooms start growing out, like almost like snail-like eye stalks in the mouth kind of twists and it almost looks like a thistle flower, but with fangs as it screams at you. Initiatives. (laughs) And I'll do a plan again. So uh, you can do that again. Three successes. So I tell the party to hurry in before they have time to form their bodies and thus get them is the battle plan. And everyone is discounted by one to buy. I will say I'm glad this is, ah, ah. I am glad to say that this is not like old World of Darkness initiative. How did that work? Remind us at Canada and the kids at home. Ah, uh, that is roll initiative first. Put them in order. Person with the lowest initiative says what they're doing. Everything, everyone knows what they're doing. Go all the way up. Person with the best initiative knows what everyone's doing. Makes the decision based on that. Kill me. Yeah, yeah, that's Zero. fun. That makes sense in dogfighting games anyway. Hessus, you get to go first. It is within close range, so you can get into engagement distance without Let's any penalty. Do. I slither beneath the bed at top speed, coming out around its ankle, but rapidly wind around the entire body, bringing my still envenomed b- saw blades to bear. Uh, let's do might close combat. And let's by the go. way, your your weapon does have the poison tag, if you remember. Yep, that's right. What, we what does that do say. exactly? <laughs> I am I getting there. Do do? Weapon tags. Painful, piercing, poison. This weapon is coated in poison. Gain access to the following trick when making an attack with this weapon. Poison, variable hits. Inflict the fact, fast acting toxin status effect on your target. I'm hoping that because they're fungal rather than actually undead, that this actually does anything. But that is going to be four successes. And, I'm, right. and because I have a discount on my, uh, on my conditions, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that one for free. All right. So you've added that. You have two left. Or actually, you do that for three. You have three more. You can do two damage this round. Would you like to do do that? Let's do two damage. All right. Two damage. So that is enough to kill it. I just circle around it until it's crushed. I mean, sliced in half. Yep. And 
as a reflexive action at zero HP, it explodes. You take one point of damage. I for totally forgot about that. <laughs> uh, what are my hit points? I don't think I set that up. That is on your character sheet, and your armor gives you one extra hit what point. What armor? Uh, you should see, uh, oh, if you didn't take armor, then it's just uh, on the second character sheet, you'll see injuries. So I take how much? Just one. I am bloodied. Yep, and if your bloody's filled, then you get a bonus die to all actions. When your wounded's filled, you get two dice. Wait, that makes me better at stuff? Uh, once it's full, yeah, you because you get desperate. It's to prevent a death spiral. That is the total opposite of what I was expecting. All right. It's the same in 7th C. I thought this was OSR inspired. Shouldn't it, it shouldn't be more deadly? It is, but the amount of damage that you can take is still pretty deadly with the traps, the conditions. Like, if you get a specific kit condition, if you fail to buy off the complications, you go to near death, regardless of health levels. Hey, it's the snake kid that just took damage. I'm not going to object so hard, uh, but oh, I'm yeah. very curious to talk to the uh, designer about the, the, th the thought process. It's intriguing. Although I think I it's appreciate not having a death spiral. I think it's just because death spirals are not fun. OSR doesn't have death spirals. You huh. just I should probably ever play one of those games. <laughs> I pass my turn. Perfect. All right. So yeah, the lack of a death spiral I'm fine with because OSR doesn't have that. That that was more of a world of darkness thing. All right. So turn is over. There are several chests here. Once again, covered in like the handy hand kind of like mycelia fungus Hesus, come here let me take a look at at your wounds oh it's only a flesh wound scale wound but certainly if you think you can help and he will slither close can i perform a medicine check to remove one of those sure bloody... yeah uh do you know what that role is i don't have the thing open it uh, I, I don't know what attribute i would use but it's a medicine i guess Either I, cunning or dexterity. That's survival. That's survival. So I'm gonna go, it's it's in game systems, so I can find that because they have okay. the list of everything in there. Is it magical or mundane? It's mundane. When performing when medicine to prefer form first aid, patch up someone or otherwise mend someone on the fly, add cunning. Okay, so medicine cunning, and then and I also have always prepared thesis, which gives me a plus one enhancement to medicine. I do like that to perform first aid on, your, aid on yourself, it is not cunning, it is composure medicine. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, big, big thumbs up on flavorful uh, pairings. I always love that about uh, dice pool system. So that's two. Two, so that is enough to patch up the health. That is for the, so if the, the wound essentially is not there, but as, but there is a chance that it could reopen. And that is, means someone will have a one trick bonus to do double damage, but only until that wound reopens and then it's that doesn't apply anymore. You know, it occurs to me that those mycelia attached to the walls attached to the chest may well be triggers for more unpleasantness. I have an idea. Hessus will go into his bags and pull out something papery and translucent and crinkly and it is one of his shed skins. Would you be a deer and go and pluck the farthest of those little strings? And the papery skin sits up, nods, and my fragment heads off to do my bidding. Okay. It has one health level. Perfect. So it goes over to the mycelia, tries to touch it, or tries to pull yeah, it Yeah, I want to know what happens. All right. When that happens, you see it grab, and deep within the... Citadel itself, you hear a boisterous, loud scream, and the whole citadel shakes as if something has awoken. I thought that it was going to be rather more localized than that. We should perhaps not be in this room anymore. There's a door to the north, and the door you came from came through. I guess I want to keep. I want to lead them to the uh, hobgoblin room because that seems like what is uh, progressing this story. So. Which room? The hobgoblin and whatever, like... Oh, the... Okay, so you gotta go... So you're going out the way you came, and then going back through the stables, and then going through the other way? Because that was where the portraits were. Those said... Sure. That was the yeah. most interesting room, right? That was the one... Uh, yeah, sure. 
That, that, that's subjective. Uh, <laughs> oh, Keegan, just help me out here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, you're, we so, said. so you're going back out the way you came, which is good, because from the north you hear kind of like the stomping footprints of something coming from the north. As you run, shoot through the stables, the stomping gets a little quieter, and you keep going, and the stomping has stopped, and the shaking has stopped. As you enter this room, as there's scattered bits of jewelry and bits of clothing and the portraits on the wall... By the way, I will have left my fragment in that previous room, instructing it to shout when whatever that is gets close. Okay. You do hear the shout, and that skin is gone. Its one health is gone. Do we have any any sense of what uh, of how long it took the thing to get there? It happened around the time that you crossed the threshold of the stable, and we're getting ready to enter the the room you're currently in. Okay, so we know how long we can kite this thing, whatever it is. Perhaps we could even pluck another mycelli in some place else. If anyone has the power to do that at long range, leading it away from us. But that's be that as it may, and for next time. In the meantime, what what's what filthy lich, rich lucre do we have in here? You find a diamond on a broken gold chain. You find a lot more gold than one would expect here, crafted into beautiful, ornate pieces, partially broken. And you find a set of clothing that when you touch it, you realize is armor, but simply looks like clothing. I like that. I wonder if it's made to fit the physiognomy of one such as myself. You can. You're probably going to ask someone to tie off the arms for you. I am currently without armor. Is anyone else without armor? I got a helmet, so you can take it. I've got no armor. You want to dice off for it? Doesn't everybody get... Oh, unless you took two of, like, a weapon or a tool or something. Yep. Yep. Rolling a d10? Nope, you can have it. Aww. Uh, but I love rollies. Alright, I'll add, uh, what should I call it in the in the gear? It is... The gear, it, it would be called uh, armor with the... It's uh, with the light tag. What does that do for me? The light tag is what makes it look like clothing. It doesn't look like armor. Huh, so it'll be suitable for a fancy snake soiree. And so that means that you have one extra health level at the uh, the bruised, or the bloodied, I'm sorry, at the bloodied, I'm mixing up my games, and you, that that gets taken out first. That might save us some healing later. Who's carrying the gold? I'll take it. I will take it off your hands. Metaphorically speaking. <laughs> I'll, I'll take some of the, the jewelry as a Hamden says as he like, <laughs> all the broken pieces. And there's something he can brings out in me that just wants money, 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 money. All it took was one D20 game to turn her into a cold, hard capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> With that, you have that bit, and you do hear something. It's almost like a thousand oh, whispers oh, all at yes. once, as you almost hear a oh, "Where so are hard. you?" And you see Mycelia growing through the southern door. Like, the strands are physically growing into the room, and they're starting to grow eyes. I, there, there's a door to the north, if you want to start rebooking it. I suggest we take the door to the north. Any objections? <laughs> you can go to the south, too. I'm, I ain't your mom. I have no objections to going north. As you go to the door in the north, the, you get a cross, crossroads. One, which way are you going? East, west, north. I say we continue to go the same direction that we left from the stable. I don't want to do a full loop. I guess there was a direction that cut off that my shadow couldn't go in because it was too far. We yeah, go that, I just, don't, go I just don't want to find a dead end. That's my thing. I don't want to find a dead end and then have to fight this thing in a box canyon, as it were. So. Well, I vote that we go into the direction we don't that we don't know where it goes. Because that seems like it's the farthest. Because everything else is just a room or a dead end, isn't it? Like you, like I said, it, the, the road has gone like this. So there's a way. There's a new path north, and there's a path to the east. But that's further north from when you were exploring that other room. 
So every place you don't know. It's all a mystery. Then let's, let's pick up the direction north. and go. The door in the north. I hear one for the north. I say let's go north. Two for the north. The north! That's Quorum. Here's uh as you guys rush up north, the door feels rough. It's not locked, but it's it's hard to open. Could I get a might athletics roll from whoever's in front? I I do have a dice pool of six. Hamden, okay. roll that dice for me, please. Hamden goes to the door. All your might, you pull it open, and immediately you are knocked on your ass as a bunch of water rushes in and pushes you down and washes you over while the door comically bounces back and forth between the wall and your leg as it tries to reclose itself. As as Hamden is, like, tumbled backwards from the force of the water, he's... Uh, when that door finally closes, he's, like, spitting up water, kind of looking at himself to make sure he's not turning to stone. You are not turning to stone. He lets out this heavy sigh of relief. The only cure for stone is fire. Do you suppose that that rush of water would have triggered any mycelia? Let's Hard not to stay to find out. Read. S- run, run, Slithering. As you run in and you get into the room, the door closes behind you and the room immediately fills back up to waist high of water. It doesn't get any higher. It doesn't get any lower. There is a door to the north and that's it. Anything of interest beneath the waves? Uh, if there's nothing interesting under the water, uh, then we can so use this later to knock back an do, enemy. You do find one thing, actually. One thing in particular. And that is that there is a gap, a magical gap between the water and the wall to your right. Meaning that there might be a way to click op- this open as a door. I have been to head for machinery, but it seems to me like there might be some more some manner of device. See here. Is there anybody that is especially good with technology? Pete will walk over and take a look at it. All right. Yeah, give me a cunning or intelligence uh, technology, Pete. So you find a latch. So you find a latch. You gain one momentum for the group, and it clicks open, and a door swings open. The water does not rush out, and you're able to step through into another room. You're out like an eel coming from the drink. Okay, you all kind of waddle into this room. The room has kind of a strange sort of pump and what appears to be like almost a manhole that leads down and deeper, as well as another door that is likely secret on the other side, but very visible on this side of the room. I wonder what lies below. Shall we find out? Yes, yes, let's go. We clone the depths. Opening it up, you notice that this leads down to an almost like sewer-like area with the pump pulling from the water supply to create enough of a land bridge to lead out of the citadel and further into the grotto and away. It is a secret entrance that you could use in the future to enter this place and have a new place to discover. Excellent. Kind of sort of periscope down, look around, confirm what it is, and then slither back up and report. But seeing as we do not need to leave yet, let's try that other door. Okay, the road or the path moves on as you go. And once again, it's a T-bar. There is a straight ahead, which is due east. There's a small door directly to the south at the cross section and a pathway to the north. I feel like going north has been giving us some good luck so far. To the north! I pledge for the door in the north! All the way to the north, and then it's just a T, east or west? West, sure. West. As you head west, and you get to the door, as you open up this room, it opens up and you are blasted in the face with spores. Who are the first three people? Who are the t- Who is the person who opened the door? Okay. You two have the infection condition, and it is a room full of corpses, twisting, fleshy still, as mushrooms are growing through them and popping open as they're starting to convert into zombies slowly. Damn it. 
The character struggles against an infection. Whether mystical or biological, the infection devours them from within and can lead to a terrible demise unless stopped. The infection starts at one. You, I, have infection of one. Each round thereafter, the target must overcome a moderate complication. That's moderate, not, mi not minor, on any physical or mental action. Failure to bite off increases the infection rating by one step, from one to two, all the way up to five. If the infection rating reaches five, the target gains the taken out status effect, or a similar devastating status effect depending on the nature of the infection. So, we can drink a draft of that crap I made, or we can fight the zombies first. Question for Keegan, you said three people got caught in that? Uh, we'll go with the first two because they were the ones at the front of the door. Oh, okay. I, I was, I was gonna volunteer to be the third person since I imagine Hamden would be at the front with them. Oh, that makes sense. So yeah. yeah, well, so we'll have Hamden actually have that too. So now we've got three people with infections and a room of four zombies. Let's fight him first and we can cure ourselves after. All right, remember that you have the, this includes your attack rolls for that complication. So yep. with that, let us go to, so once again, uh, I need the initiative roll. And uh, I'll go ahead and roll the cunning battle plan, because why not? That seems especially relevant with all of us having, uh, no, that's only combat tricks. It is reflexive. Is that a mental action I just made? My infection rating goes to two and we add one momentum. No other, no other effects. Oh, I will not count it for the, um, I will not count it for the initiative. The initiative we will not do. Hessis goes first, then hand in. Cutting five, baby. So snake-like, so tricky. I, uh, do the thing I said. I surge into the room yet again and try to wrap them up. This time, planning to throw them away after if I succeed well enough. Perfect. Ten die pool, gotta buy off a two-dot thing, let's go. One success. Well, that's its defense, so you did one damage. Oh. And my infection progresses. Oh wait, I get a free, I get a free trick. Uh, so I will, uh, cause I have the discount. So I will use that to push it a range band away from me in case somebody does ranged afterwards to kill it. Okay. And I am at fungus three. Perfect, okay. <laughs> Might have our first KO by accident. Uh, Hamden, it is your turn. Are you attacking a fresh one? Or are you attacking the, uh, the one that Hessis attacked or what? Uh, I'm going to go attack the one that Hessis that attacked, working okay. off of their shove. Uh, okay. All right, go for it. All right. Roll. So he pulls the his uh, arrow back, kind of maybe like takes cover behind the arch of the doorway as Hamden shouts, uh, don't get too close, as he lets the arrow loose going, kind of aiming for the skull of the fungal zombie, probably aiming to go through the eye socket. As it goes through, the eye socket pops out the other side as you see little mice silly trying to grab it and pull it out as the creature screams and explodes in a blast of spores. Uh, all right, next is the bigger zombie, which goes for our friend Hessus and comes in as it shambles forward, mouth kind of cracks open as you see the fungus kind of rip away like rotted flesh. And it comes in for a bite. What do I do? What do I do? You can roll stamina because you've already acted to add to your defense. Or your defense is one if you don't want to risk additional infection. My defense is one if I don't want to risk additional infection. Uh, so your stamina. defense is... Okay, roll stamina. That is a botch. Ooh. So your defense stays one, and but your infection goes up to four. That wasn't a was that a mental action? Oh no! It's a physical action. <laughs> oh god! What was I thinking? And it gets the bite. So one, and it's going to use the extra successes to get an additional point of damage. So you take two points of damage as it runs up to Hessus, grabs, moves just around the saw just enough gets a bite and you see this pull of scales and sinew rip out all as right, blood right. dribbles Should down I... as you get this bleeding you're kind of well it is zetru i'm gonna cast black blade which means that a weapon of liquid darkness appears in my hands at will and uh, it is a um, 
I can make- it is good for a one successful strike. If I miss, then it's still there and I can still do it, try it. And it has the abyssal tag. Okay, so, excellent. Whatever it happens. Yeah, okay. So it's- is it a clo close combat? I, oh, it I, I am attacking combat. this big guy. The big one? Okay. Yeah. Um, so close combat and might. Oh, yes. Oh, please. Okay. Nine, eight, two. Oh, and this is a ten, so four, four successes. Plus the enhancement um, on the weapon. So is that an additional free trick, or is that a, just an enhancement? An enhancement gives you five success. It gives you an additional success. So you have five successes. Its defense was one, so you've hit. So you have, you have four to go. Now you can spend three of those successes to do one additional point of damage, and then you'd have one trick left, and that trick could be used to push it away. That trick could be used. Uh, I have the we have the combat trick thing up, so you could. Could you push you towards another zombie? Ooh, like I good idea. Hessels, you're in danger right now, right? You're like oh, very in danger. So I would, I'd appreciate it if you push it away. Yeah. So you're saying I can do three extra da damage and a trick? You can't one extra. Multiple trick one, you could do. You could spend three to do one additional damage, and then you could do the last one to do a shove. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what I do. But uh, the, the weapon does also have abyssal tag. Yep, so what that means is if you've taken damage, you heal one point of damage as you literally rip the life out of the mushrooms and feed it into yourself. And it's not possible to transfer over the healing to No, this is <laughs> no. Uh, you do have okay. a discount of one, so you still actually have one trick point remaining. Oh, right, because of Hesus's trick. Oh, right. What can I do? What are so, my options there? We have several options, and so a general one could be uh, distraction, which means the target suffers a plus one difficulty on all range combat or athletics, which doesn't fit here. You could do a feint. Every hit spent on fate, you generate enhancement for your ally for the next attack against the opponent. So you could just bank that one momentum. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's go over that. So you hit it, you do two damage. And this thing has more health than the others, yes. So, it's still up. And now it is... Koso. Oh, uh, wait, actually, hold oh. on. I can use one hit to knock my opponent prone. Okay, do you want to do that? You can do that. Yeah, but, you know, after I pull the, pull, push them away from Hesus. Okay, so no momentum, so cool. Now, Koso, I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. So... How many of these are within like the same range band? Uh, now there's only, uh, there's a total of, there's one left in the range band, or there's they're actually all in the same range band. They're all at the medium range band because of the throw. Great. So I'd like to use these chaos rocks I've been collecting and do what I'm best at. Boom, boom. Yes. <laughs> uh, let me, let me, let me reread how this works. Did you take cluster bomb as well? I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i can do with boom i can use them essentially as ranged flaming attacks and then with cluster bomb i can do two at once oh that's lovely okay and they have a weakness to fire and i have six and i have six rocks too right now oh so. yes okay bro let's go all right so is that just flat i would assume dexterity and range combat yes I'm gonna say yes. I think you can tech. It's technically you can also use might athletics, but we'll just do the range combat. Um, we'll use the better dice roll. Do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it this way. <laughs> awesome. So I got to make a roll for them. They have to do a defense roll. So they have. Oh, do I have to roll it twice, or is it like the same attack? I'm gonna say it's the same attack. That just the less rolling in some cases, at least for combat, the better. Vulnerability fire. Choose a sensation that uh, each turn the creature is exposed to its vulnerability. Must roll a secondary pool to reflect it. So action on a failure, they either flee or unable to act while their defense lowers to zero. Perfect. Uh, so secondary pool for the big one. They're good. They're good. That's okay, but you do do damage. And, and the thing... And the damage is twice. Is that how that works? Yes. Okay. So... You kill the small one. The small one burns away, and because it's fire, it doesn't explode. It just falls and shrivels. And all that's left is 
the big one who is still up burning away as you see fragments of mushrooms like burning away, revealing bone as it slowly tries to regrow over the skeletal structure. Um, technically it's down because it's prone. Fair enough. All right, and Pete? Seeing the flames kept them from exploding, Pete's going to approach the big mycelia zombie and strike at it with his flaming scimitar. Strike away. That's two so, successes. That's enough. Yep. And I also have the minus one to purchase a, a trick. And oh, the, the burning is only one dot. Yep. So I will go ahead and add the burning tag. Okay. And then... Awesome. And then, so you're going to bank that one piece of, uh, one hit for momentum then? Yeah, I don't think I need to do anything else. That should kill it. Okay. You do that, it falls, it burns away, leaving a skeleton behind. Let's go! For the love of Christ, Essis, drink your fucking potion. I drink my fucking potion, then give the other two doses to the others. Yeah, because the other two have also been gaining infection because they haven't been buying off their complication of... Uh... I'm still at I one, know. aren't I? No, because you had to spend two hits to stop your infection from going up. I didn't know that. Oh, yes, that's what we were saying, so... So yeah. am I just encrusted in toadstools as I'm, uh... Yeah, as they, I drink? You're drinking and you see, like, the stuff under your skin start to quickly recede. <laughs> Yikes. Maybe. Uh, can I, uh, as a dramatic action, uh, shed my skin, please? Sure. <laughs> Ugh, I hate that feeling. Get someone, and from inside my own skin, will someone help me, please? Just oh, right, because <laughs> you got I'm armor on it. Could you pull a little, please? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, uh, knowing what to, needs to be done here, I'm just gonna pull it off. We've all been Aha! here before. Aha! Oh, that's so good! Thank you. Okay, don't. <laughs> and so you have that. I'm going to say the last thing that you guys do is you head back a little bit through exploring. You do find a library. And more importantly, you find lots of books. Several of them worn away, but many of them talking about ancient histories, including worlds in which the sun was still above. Does it speak of those creatures we found? The skeletons? It does not, but they do speak of a just lord who seems to have become known as the Ruined Lord, whose realm was eaten by the Abyss and dragged into the world below. We totally misheard what you'd said before and said rot instead of ruin, right? Yes, or you just assumed, yes, <laughs> yeah. But with that, Ooh. you guys are able to collect some things and sneak the fuck out of here and are able to return to town a little richer, a little wiser, and I think everyone with one experience point for their uh, reaching some some aspect of their character. So I have two. <laughs> you have two. And so that is our attempt at the worlds below everyone. Mysteries found, mysteries discovered, but not fully unraveled yet. Perhaps our heroes will be able to discover more at a future date. Perhaps your heroes could do the same. For the calm will come again, and the citadel and the grotto shall move along with the ruined lord in the world below. How did everyone think? Did everyone get a kind of D&D &D sense, but with dice pools? We'll do a round robin, so. I uh, had a blast and a half. I quite like the trick aspect and how easy it is to uh, get there. Uh, it, you can do the interesting flavor combat maneuvers that as a Pathfinder kid, I am always annoyed that I can't do very well. So the fact that you can actually do your attack and then decide what cool extra thing you want to have happen, fucking love that. And I always prefer a dice pool system as a resolution. It's always more flavorful when you can, uh, oh, uh, you know, make, play mix and match with, uh, you know, with your attribute and your skill. That just feels correct. Yeah, I, th I thought the. Uh, I think it's not for everybody, but I think it is a fun type of game of, with having just a lot of different options of everything. And yeah, the tricks are fun to get to do an extra thing and rolling a lot of dice is fun. 
I had fun. It doesn't have to have a D&D vibe, but I did have, that, I guess I know that was a D&D vibe. That was kind of the attempt, like ex exploration, having kind of classes and things like that. Because these games, just for some context, uh, Joe is, these games used to almost define themselves as not being D&D. So this game is an attempt to inject a little bit of that back in with a fantasy style. And I mean, like I said, Ed Greenwood contributed to this book and he's the father of the Forgotten Realms. Sure. And that's all. I mean, I have right. fun. Cool. Yeah, I, I enjoyed playing this a lot. Like with the character creation, it felt like there were so many choices and options that like there's there's no it felt like to me that there's no way somebody can play like there's no way that two people can play the the same kind of character even by accident um i i do like the the tricks in the combat i felt like it it still lets you be able to do damage and kind of go through combat quickly while at the same time kind of customize your attack to do more than just damage in the same turn. I had a lot of fun. Excellent. So for me, I thoroughly enjoyed the mechanic that is essentially yes, but, or it's a yes and. So you could perform your action and do extra things, do your action and deal with some of the, the consequences that arise from doing said action and it's not just combat but it could be breaking in that keegan using as, as an example we built a snake bridge that had other things that we needed to deal with or a, a myriad of other examples that can be used it, it is a great mechanic that allows a lot of different flavor that a lot of other games did not necessarily provide in its rules in its rule book. It was always a uh, DM flavor that allowed it. So I, I really liked that. There was some confusion or lack of description for which stat or attributes are used for which roles that we needed to do. And I don't know if that was on us or if that was on the book that we use, used specifically. So I will, I will give that as also some constructive criticism. I would also like to say we didn't go over it in the first recording since we were kind of short on time. But the synthesis purchases that we could use during our character creation felt very strict on what we could and could not purchase for our character. The Theseus was very broad, very robust. The chaos sorcery or the chaotic sorceries, those I could understand since you're not going to start with a really strong sorcery, even if you had the four dots. But the synthesis specifically was very specific on who could get it and who could not get it. I think that's most of what I have if somebody else says something and it pops up uh, an idea for me, I'll speak up after they're done. But otherwise, I think that about covers what we went through. I don't really have any uh, major th things I want to add about system. And that might be that might just be because uh, I've played an enough of OPP's games that use this system that I'm I don't know. I, I know how it works and I'm fine with it. Um, I've, I've always been a little bit iffy about range bands, but like it didn't really bother me in this setting. It, it can it can get really confusing depending on how complicated the combat gets, but it doesn't, it, you know, it's all, all the games are like that, not just this one. I actually liked that the some of the syntheses were um, really strict uh, personally. And the reason I liked that was because I felt like it really enforced the theme of where your character was coming from and what their disciplines were uh, by by where they were coming from. So I didn't mind that at all. And maybe, you know, and this was thesis, not synthesis, but maybe getting the Makiro access to blowing shit up was part of why I was like, that's fine with me. But, um, you know, it was, I thought it was, I thought it was fine. Uh, uh, setting wise, uh, I think the setting is fucking great. I do, like I mentioned last, I do think that some of the ways, and it's didn't come up in our play, 
but but upon reading the material some of the ways that uh the colonialism of the setting is being addressed is a little bit funky feeling to me it's a little bit uh it it, it I, I think there's like a little bit of like a some some maybe i should say some misunderstandings of what how how the process of colonialism works especially this is a form of settler colonialism uh, and what the impact it has on indigenous communities uh and i kind of wish that was looked at a little bit more carefully and but that's like my biggest complaint about the setting otherwise i, I think it's really fun Jizzle was one of the two indigenous communities uh that i oh wait no three there's three indigenous communities Chisel's one of the two that gets mentioned, yeah. And it was the one I was thinking about playing at first. And then kind of as I sat there thinking about the implications of playing that community in this setting, I, I moved away from it because I wasn't comfortable. Oh, that's totally fair. And for me, to answer the question that I was asked when handed this, does this create an OSR feel? Yes. You can absolutely do an OSR style game with this. I actually based this adventure off of two other adventures, one that I'm aware of and one I've actually run, where it's not fully combat focused, it's exploration while there is a big bad in the dungeon hunting you, and part of it is to just grab as much shit and learn as much shit about the tomb while you are trying to avoid this big bad that is very unlikely to impossible to defeat at your character's current experience. So I was able to incorporate that feel. I, I like range bands in combat a lot um, overall. I think that's fine, especially because this game is obviously way more narratively focused than a D&D &D or an OSR game, which does have the feet in nitty gritty details. I think the range bands works out really well if used, if momentum is used to create like odd, what am I looking for? Odd blockers or obstacles in range bands. So your character explains something and then they say they jump over a small chasm, which now forces whatever's hunting you to jump over that chasm as well. I think that's a great way to create a kind of pulpy action-y feel. I do really like the setting. I think it is an interesting take on dungeon exploration in that everyone's living in the dungeon. So I do like that. And so if you like this game, if you like what we did, or and especially if you made it this far, the backer kit link will be in the description of this video. So go check it out. And, you know, let them know a bunch of gamers sent you. And until then, I've been Keegan, and we'll catch you in that next one. Bye. 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 Bye all. Bye bye. Bye.